Howdy folks, hope you're ready for some more graph theory. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving that the size of every connected graph of order n is at least n minus 1. So for a graph to be connected, it's got to have at least one less edge than it has vertices. It might have more edges than that, but it's got to have at least that many. For those of you who are familiar with tree graphs, you might notice that what this is kind of saying is that tree graphs are minimally connected graphs. You're not going to get a less connected graph than a tree graph. For those of you not familiar with tree graphs, a connected graph of order n with exactly n minus 1 edges, turns out such graphs will never have cycles, and connected graphs with no cycles are called tree graphs. So pretty cool. We'll get into the proof in just a minute. Let's first just show that our result holds for all graphs of order 1, 2, and 3. A connected graph of order 1 has to look like that, and that fills our condition. It's got at least 1 minus 1, or 0 edges. Connected graphs of order 2, that's the only one. It also satisfies our claim. It's got at least 2 minus 1, or 1 edges. Connected graphs of order 3, this, there are two such graphs and they both satisfy our claim as well. They both have at least 3 minus 1 or 2 edges. So our claim is true for graphs of order 1, 2, and 3. So going forward, we can assume that n is greater than or equal to 4. That's all we have left to prove. This is going to be a proof by minimum counterexample, which is a type of proof by contradiction. So we'll suppose for the sake of contradiction that there does exist some connected graph of order n whose size is not at least n minus 1. In other words, its size would be at most n minus 2. Now among all such counterexamples to our claim, we're going to pick out a minimum counterexample, which is why this is called a proof by minimum counterexample. In particular, we're going to minimize the order. So among all such counterexamples to our claim, let's pick out a graph G that has the fewest number of vertices among all those counterexamples. I'll write that now. So among all counterexamples to our claim, we're going to say that G is a minimum, a counterexample of minimum order. There might be multiple counterexamples with the same order, we're just going to say G is one of them. In order for it to be a counterexample, it's got to be a connected graph. We're going to call its minimum order N, and again, for it to be a counterexample, it's got to have at most N minus 2 edges. So that's strictly less than N minus 1 edges. Now the idea of this proof by minimum counterexample is we want to show that this is in fact not a minimum counterexample, which is going to produce a contradiction, thus showing that our claim actually must be true. So to find a counterexample that is more minimal than this one, you might think we'll have to delete a vertex from G. Then we can have a counterexample that has fewer vertices from G, fewer vertices than G, excuse me, contradicting the fact that G is a minimum counterexample. But remember, to contradict our claim, a graph has to be connected. So we can't just delete any vertex from G. We don't want to accidentally delete a cut vertex. So what type of vertex is never a cut vertex? Well, that would be an end vertex, a vertex of degree 1. You can never disconnect the graph by deleting a vertex of degree 1. Looks something like that, right? You got a graph, and here's a vertex of degree 1. You'll never disconnect the graph by deleting a vertex of degree 1. So we would like it if G had a vertex of degree 1 so that we could delete it and be sure that the resulting graph was still connected. So then we'll claim that in fact G does have an end vertex, a vertex of degree 1. Why must it? Well, suppose for the sake of contradiction that G does not have an end vertex. We also know it doesn't have any isolated vertices because it's a connected graph that's non-trivial since it's got to have at least four vertices. So it's connected non-trivial, which means it has no isolated vertices of degree zero. We're assuming for the sake of contradiction, it has no vertices of degree one. So every vertex in G must have a degree of at least two. Now, what if we add up all the degrees of all the vertices in G? What a, what a squeaky marker. Well, by the first theorem of graph theory, if we add up all of the degrees of the vertices in G, that's equal to 2 times m, where m is the size of the graph, the number of edges. 
Since the degree of every vertex is at least two, this has to be greater than or equal to two times n, two times the number of vertices, because every vertex is going to contribute at least two to the degree sum. So two times m, the degree sum, has to be greater than or equal to two times n. We could divide both sides of this inequality by two to get that m is greater than or equal to n, and notice that n is strictly greater than n minus two. That's a problem, because we assumed that m, the size of our minimum counterexample g, was at most n minus two. Here we see the size m is greater than n minus two. So that's a contradiction, that can't be, so it must be the case that g does have an n vertex. We'll call that n vertex v, and we'll delete it. So let me write that now. So we're saying let v be an n vertex of g. It's a vertex we proved had to exist in g. It's got to have an n vertex. So let v be an n vertex, and now consider g minus v. We want to show that g minus v is actually a counterexample to our claim that has fewer vertices than g. First thing we want to point out, why did we talk about n vertices so much, well g minus v has to be connected because g is connected. Remember that g is a counterexample to our claim, which means it has to be connected and you can't disconnect a connected graph by deleting an n vertex. So g minus v is connected. All we have left to do then is to show that g doesn't satisfy this part of our condition and thus is a counterexample. Uh, let me write in red. So what's the order of g? the order, or excuse me, the order of g minus v. Well, the order of g was n, and we deleted one vertex to get to g minus v. So the order of g minus v is n minus one. Now, what is the size of g minus v? Well, the size of g was at most n minus two. When we delete an end vertex, we're deleting exactly one edge because an end vertex is incident to exactly one edge. So the size of g minus v will have to be at most, so less than or equal to, at most n minus three. Again, g had at, at most n minus two edges. We got rid of exactly one. So g minus v has at most n minus three edges. And so that shows that g minus v is a counterexample to our claim. Remember our claim was that every connected graph has to have at least one less edge than it has vertices. But we see that g minus v is a connected graph that has at most two fewer edges than it has vertices. So g minus v is a counterexample, and in particular, g minus v is a counterexample with fewer vertices than what we assumed was our counterexample of minimum order. That's a contradiction. If g is a counterexample of minimum order, you can't find a counterexample that has a lesser order, but we did, that's a contradiction. So it turns out there cannot exist any counterexamples at all, and our claim holds. The size of every Every connected graph of order n is at least n minus 1. I think it's a really cool result. So I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.